all know that subthalamic deep brain stimulation effects may decrease with the Parkinson's disease progression, as well the effect of levodopa does. In, the, in fact, uh, we all know that after 15, 25 or 30 or even earlier years of disease, there, are, there is the appearance of uh, levodopa resistant axial symptoms, which are a resistance also to subthalamic deep brain stimulation, such as postural instability and falls or freezings, as well as uh, levodopa resistant non motor symptoms, such as uh, cognitive impairment and hallucination. However, so far, there are no indication if, when, and how to consider the interruption of uh, subthalamic deep brain stimulation treatment in late stage Parkinson disease patients. So uh, we performed a multicenter crossover double blind randomized study followed by a longitudinal open label assessment with the aim to uh, investigate the percentage of poor stimulator responders among late-stage Parkinson's disease patients. In order to do this, we included in our study a late-stage Parkinson's disease patient defined by a non-AR stage of four or five and a Schwab in England score less than 50 in the medication on stimulation on the condition and a patient who had had uh, already had the stimulation at least five years before with an initial good response to stimulation and who's the stimulation parameters and anti-Parkinsonian medication were stable over the last three months and has a solution criteria we decide to uh, uh, do not include patient if the caregiver could not participate into the study. So we performed uh, initial evaluation with a, a double a crossover double blind um, a randomized uh, uh, design, and uh, we included uh, eight Italian DBS experience at center participate in the study. And uh, for each patient, we perform a baseline evaluation in which we study clinical uh, relevant features such as uh, uh, disease duration, age, TBS, uh, DBS duration, lived up equivalent daily dose, and several questionnaires such as the MDS, UPDRS part. Uh, uh, one, two, three, and four, the uh, quality of life of patient and caregivers by mean of the hero call and um, the direct caregiver burden inventory scale to assess the caregiver burden and the mini mental examination scale. Then patient uh, underwent a acute stimulation challenge test and uh, they all were in the med of condition and uh, we study patient in both stimulation condition with both stimulation on and then off or on and off in a randomized sequences and uh, this patient the caregiver and the assessment physician were blinded to the stimulation condition while an independent physician not involved in the assessment switched on and off the stimulation. In both stimulation condition, we evaluated the MDS UPDRS part three for motor symptoms and the patient global impression improvement scales. If the improvement at motor scale were more than 10 percentage, the simulation was switched on and the patient ended the evaluation and the study ended for this patient. While if the improvement and the simulation challenge was less than 10 percentage, um, we decided to uh, keep the stimulation off and the um, double blind study ended and we began the open level part of the study, which lasted a month during which the patient continued to take his or her medica usual medication with possible adjustment in medication if needed, while, while the stimulation was uh, switched off. 
Then we performed a last assessment to performing the same questionnaire and tests that we did at the baseline, such as the Eurocall for quality of life, the MDS UPDRS part two and three, and the patient global improvement scale in order to decide uh, along with patient and caregivers if the simulation um, should be switched on or could be kept off. We included in the study 36 uh, patients that were finally 35 because uh, in one patient the stimulation switched off before the beginning of the study. And uh, there's a uh, 35 patient with a mean age of 71 years, a mean disease duration of 27 years, and a DBS treatment duration of 14 years. 50% of the patients had the only year score of 5, 17% were institutionalized, uh, but no one had the percutaneous gastrostomy. So um, at the stimulation challenge test, we found a good stimulation response in significantly a significant improvement at mo for motor symptoms of about 17 percentage at the MDS UPDRS part uh, three of the scale, and um, the majority of patients, such as the 80 percent of them, were classified at the, as good motor response responders. Why seven patients over 35 were classified as poor motor responders because the improvement at the motor scale was less than 10 percentage. Those patients remained with the chemo stimulation kept off, but in one, we had to switch on the stimulation after a few days due to the appearance of dysphagia and hypersalurea. And um, regarding the other six, uh, we performed the last evaluation after two months, after one month. And in three, we had to switch back on the stimulation due to the uh, Mm, appearance, a uh, uh, worsening of Parkinsonism and dysphagia, while three over 35 stayed with the stimulation off and they still are with the stimulation off. So what we can conclude with our study is that, um, and above all, first of all, we do not, did not observe any serious event during the whole course of the study, and we observe as a, a switching off the stimulation, the delay of a pe for appearance of long-term uh, adverse event is very variable, ranging from three days to 10 days. What we can conclude for our study is that the vast majority in our study was 92% of late stage patients shows still a meaningful response to, to subthalamic deep brain stimulation, both in, the, in an acute stimulation challenge term, test or in a long term. And uh, the effect of stimulation may take days to disappear after its discontinuation. And we can also affirm that uh, the algorithm that we adopt to decide if stimulation could be discontinued in a late stage Parkinson's disease patient is a very safe and effective decisional algorithm that could guide physicians and caregivers in taking a challenging therapeutic decision for those patients.